Monsieur Cam M. Bear was, as his name suggests, a bear. But he was no ordinary bear. For you see, Monsieur Camembert was a bit of a businessman. He owned his own fromagerie in the middle of his hometown in France. Every day, he had dozens of customers flock through his shop doors to sample and buy wedges of the different cheeses he had for sale. Monsieur Camembert took his job very seriously. Each morning, he would dress himself in his finest attire to impress his customers. He would always wear a smart waistcoat with a beret that he would tip to customers as they departed his fromagerie. And he ensured that his half-moon-shaped spectacles were polished to perfection so that they glinted and gleamed in the sunlight. He would greet everyone with a cheerful bonjour and send them on their way with a smile on their face and a belly full of cheese. Monsieur Cam Humbert had a fine reputation to uphold, and he wanted his fromagerie to be the talk of the town, the creme de la creme. No detail was too small for Cam. From the bijou bistro tables to the picturesque paintings hanging on the walls by Henri Matisse, everything was beautiful in Monsieur Camembert's fromagerie. All of his regular customers would stay for hours sampling his latest cheese concoctions, sipping coffee and fresh lemonade, and delighting in the dazzling surroundings of his French cheese shop. Animals stopped in the street to peer in through his shop window and admire the pretty surroundings. Cam and Bear had always wanted to have his own cheese shop. It had been his dream since he was a little bear. From the first moment that he tasted cheese, he knew that he didn't want to taste anything else. He longed to share his passion for fromage with as many people as possible. Camembert had had his fromagerie for over 20 years now, and not a day had gone by that he hadn't loved it. One morning, Cam woke up with a spring in his step. He often did, but today something felt different. He had a feeling it was going to be a very good day. He slipped on his favourite brown, yellow and red checkered waistcoat and his lucky beret. Then he combed his fur until not a hair was out of place and placed his glasses on the bridge of his snout. He admired himself in the mirror and whispered, I look superb, even if I do say so myself. Then he made the short journey from his home to his fromagerie to open up for the day. He made himself a coffee with cream whilst he set to work removing all the different cheeses from the fridge and placing them in the cabinet for customers to peer into and select their choices from. Then he put his own creations on the top shelf. Just the night before, Cam had stayed behind a little longer at the shop to whip up a delicious cheesecake for today's special. He placed it in the central spot in the glass cabinet and then wrote it on the chalkboard below the other specials. Other specials today included a warm melted fondue pot, a truffle and cheese pancake and a delectable cheese and onion quiche. Monsieur Camembert was often asked what cheese was his favourite, but he could never answer. He loved all cheese. For as long as he could remember, it was all that he ate. Whilst his fellow brothers and sisters had devoured hives of honey, juicy bundles of berries and spicy, crunchy nuts, he had opted instead for heaps and heaps of cheese, but only the French kind. Whether it was gooey brie, tasty gruyere, or his fragrant namesake, Camembert, Cam loved every type of cheese, and he loved sharing his passion and knowledge with everyone else. 
Once his fromagerie doors were open, customers started flooding in to buy his cheese creations and relax in his beautiful shop. The sun was streaming in through the big windows, and Camembert sighed with satisfaction as he observed his happy customers and popped a chunk of goat cheese into his mouth. All of a sudden, the bell above the shop door jingled and a familiar face walked in. It was Bucky the goat, delivering Cam's latest order of cheese. Cam rubbed his hands together with jubilation. He couldn't wait to see what selection of fromage Bucky had brought for him today. Bucky placed a large cardboard box on top of the glass cabinet and greeted Cam. Bonjour, Monsieur Camembert. Is it not a très beau day? Bucky said. Cam had to agree. It was a particularly lovely day. He leaned forward and took the box. Hmm, what do you have here for me today? Cam asked Bucky with intrigue as he opened it up with his paws. As soon as Cam lifted the lid on the box, the cheesy smell from within wafted out into the room. It all smelt delicious, and Cam licked his lips with longing. He had to remember that the cheese was for his customers, not for him to gobble up on his own. Although he would certainly try a bite or two of each one, just to make sure that it was good enough to serve. Bucky gave the names of the different cheeses in the box, and Cam nodded his head in recognition of each one. However, the last cheese in the box was a new one that Cam hadn't seen before. Oh, what is this one? Cam inquired, pointing at the round cheese with a hard orange exterior. Bucky answered, It is called a turkey and it is made in the mountains. Cam was surprised. He'd never heard of etorki cheese before. Cam thought he knew every type of cheese that came from France. The curious bear sliced off a segment of the etorki cheese and ate it. His eyes grew wide as the flavours burst all over his tongue. It tasted spectacular like earthy hazelnut, sweet caramel and spicy pepper all in one, with a velvety texture that melted in his mouth. Ooh la la, it is amazing, Cam cried, reaching into the box for another piece. Why have I not tried it before? Bucky explained. Well, you see, The sheep who produce this cheese don't make it very often. They live up in the French Pyrenees Mountains, and they prefer a quiet, relaxing life where they do very little work. But for a few months a year, they create a batch of this cheese to share with the shepherds and local villages that surround their mountain. And I was lucky enough to get hold of some. Cam was fascinated. There were sheep in the Pyrenees Mountains making cheese this delicious. How intriguing. Cam had never really thought much about where cheese came from. He had simply enjoyed eating it and selling it, and that was that. Now, however... He paused to wonder, where did his cheeses come from? It seemed as though there was more for him to learn after all. Why did they give some to you? Cam asked Bucky. Bucky replied, I travel around collecting lots of different types of cheeses. I have been to Italy and Greece. Austria and Switzerland, and even as far as New Zealand to try out all the different cheeses and bring them back for my clients. 
There are so many types out there, all over the world. Cam needed to sit down. He'd only ever thought that cheese was made in France. But now he was discovering that cheese was made all over the world. There must be so many that he hadn't yet tried. Cam suddenly felt a hunger in his belly and a drive in his heart to find out more. He wanted to try every cheese in the world and know exactly where they came from. He couldn't stop thinking about the sheep who lived in the French mountains and made this special etorki cheese. If he was going to sell this cheese to his customers, he wanted to know the origins of its creation. Cam suddenly had a plan. Bucky, he said, could you take me to meet the sheep in the Pyrenees Mountains? I would adore meeting them and learning more about the exquisite etoki cheese they make. Bucky said he would be happy to take Cam to the French mountains. He could do with making another trip there anyway to pick up some more cheese, since it was such a hit with his own customers. So Cam shut up shop early that day to venture off to the Pyrenees Mountains in search of the source of this delicious etoki cheese. Bucky drove his wagon through the towns, out into the countryside and up into the mountains to find the village where the sheep lived. He had only been there twice before, but he remembered the dusty roads well, and his wagon juddered and shuddered as it clambered up the rocky mountain roads. Eventually, they reached a mountainside patch of land that opened up into what appeared to be a little village. The ground was covered in lush grass, perfect for grazing on, and there were several wooden huts with a large, roaring fire in what looked like an iron pot in the middle of the village. Everywhere Cam looked, there were mountain sheep, relaxing, grazing and chatting. One of the sheep recognised Bucky and crossed the village to meet him. Bonjour, Bucky, the sheep smiled warmly. Back to Tweet. Did you sell out of our etoki fromage already? Bucky gushed about how popular their cheese had been and confessed that he was back for more. He had also brought his good friend, Cam and Bear, along for the ride this time. Cam was eager to learn more about the sheep who made the cheese to relay to his customers back at his fromagerie. Bonjour, waved Cam eagerly. Bonjour, mon ami, the sheep waved back. The friendly sheep was called Agnes, and she was the perfect person to speak to about their fromage. It turned out that Agnes oversaw all the fromage creation here on the mountain. She offered to give them a little bit of a tour. She showed Cam and Bucky over to where they made their delectable etoki cheese. At the back of the village, there were several sheep, all working as a team to make the delicious fromage. There were a couple of sheep pouring out milk into massive bowls. Then other sheep stirred it over a fire to warm it up and make the cheese curdle and solidify. Then, once it was the perfect condition, a few sheep took the mixture out of the bowls and shaped it into round bundles, passing them to a couple of sheep who rubbed salt into the external orange brine that coated and covered the cheese. Finally, they stored away the balls of cheese in a cool, dark hut to leave to harden until they were ready to be eaten or sold. It was a slick, well-oiled machine, and Cam was very impressed. It was clear that the mountain sheep knew exactly what they were doing and had done this many times before. Agnes declared with pride, 
We have been making our cheese for over 4,000 years here on the mountain. We only make it from December through to July. And then we take the rest of the year off for a long, relaxing break. It sounded nice to Cam. He barely ever took a day off work from his fromagerie, but he didn't really mind. He adored his cheese shop, and he wouldn't change it for the world. Agnes disappeared into the cheese hut and, after a few seconds, emerged with a block of Vetorki cheese. Would you like to try some? she asked Bucky and Cam. Camembert licked his lips and nodded his head. He had already had some today, but he would happily have some more. Agnes cut up the cheese into lots of small pieces and laid them out on a wooden board. Then she asked one of her friends to bring over a plate of figs, chunks of apple and some black cherry jam compote. Cam and Bear wondered what she wanted all of those bits of fruit and figs for. Perhaps Agnes was very hungry. Once Agnes had the plate of fruit, she began piling it up on top of the wedges of cheese. Cam frowned with confusion. Why was she pairing the fruit with the cheese? They would taste strange together. However, Agnes assured him that she knew what she was doing. Cheese was excellent when paired with other foods and flavours, she told him, especially things such as fruit. Once her little board of cheese pairings was prepared, she held out her hooves and announced, Voila! Bon appétit! Cam and Bucky dug into the pieces of cheese with fruit piled on top. The creamy caramel flavourings of the cheese paired with the rich, sweet flavours of the fruit were irresistible. Cam had never thought to pair cheese with anything other than crackers and crusty bread before. But now that he knew that fruit tasted so good with it, he would be adding these combinations to his menu back in his fromagerie. This is divine! I've never tasted cheese this good before, exclaimed Cam, kissing his fingertips lightly and joyfully tossing them into the air with praise. Agnes the sheep smiled with pride. I'm glad you like it she said. Like it? Cam exclaimed. J'adore it, he added, grabbing the last piece of cheese with a fig on top. Cam was grateful to Bucky for bringing him up the mountain with him, and he was equally grateful to Agnes the sheep for her hospitality during his visit. Before Cam and Bucky had to head back down the mountain to go home, they stocked up on as much a talky cheese as the wagon could carry. Bucky looked forward to spreading the word about the delicious sheep's cheese to more of his clients, and Cam was eager to get back and add it to the menu at his fromagerie. Waving au revoir to Agnes and the other mountain sheep, Cam and Bucky rolled home with a wagon full of cheese and bellies full of almost as much. The next day, Cam opened up his fromagerie as normal, and the first customers through his door were some of his favourites. A family of mice called the Pembertons came into his shop at least once a week to get their fill of cheese. They loved cheese about as much as Cam did, so they always had lots to talk about. The mice all sat down at the biggest round table in the cafe and looked at the menu. One of the mice turned to Cam and asked, Do you have anything new on the menu today? 
Any specials? Cam pointed to the specials board, where he had sketched out all of the limited edition dishes. But then, he remembered that he had something better in store that he could offer them today. He suggested to the mice, Can I surprise you with something today? It's something totally new that I have in store. You will be the first to try it. The mice looked around very excited and very intrigued to find out what it was. They put down their menus and allowed Cam to surprise them. Cam quickly disappeared behind the glass counter and prepared to improvise a special dish for the mice today. Thanks to Agnes the sheep, he knew exactly what to serve them. He sliced up a block of Itorki cheese into small pieces and topped each one with a selection of jams, figs and fruit pieces. He then placed it all on a chopping board and served it to the family of mice at the bistro table. The mice dug in and chomped up the cheese and fruit with their little buck teeth. Cam listened to their exclamations of delight and interest in the new, mouth-watering addition to his cafe menu. What is this new cheese? One of the mice asked with a mouthful of jam. Cam explained where the Otorki cheese had come from and how he had come across it. He relayed everything that he had learnt, and the mice listened with eager ears. Wow, one of the mice commented. So, will you be making any other trips to try out new cheeses? If there are any more out there that are half as good as this, then you could have a new cheese from around the world for us to eat every week. Cam grinned and admitted that he had thought about it. Now that he had been introduced to new cheeses and had discovered that there are many more around the world that he still hadn't tried, he felt compelled to hunt them all down, learn all about them, and bring them back to his fromagerie. The mice thought that it was an excellent idea, and they said that they would happily be his cheese testers to make sure that each one he found was good enough for his fromagerie. The mice became excited at the prospect of Cam travelling the world. They declared it would be his grand cheese tour and they pulled out a map of the world to choose where he could journey first. The mice laid out the map on the table and argued about where Cam should go first. He should go to Austria, one of them decided. No, 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 he should go to Spain, another declared. The mice discussed back and forth, pointing at different countries on the map while Cam thought to himself, where would he like to go first in search of new cheeses to try? He thought about the food he liked to add cheese to. Bread, pasta, pastry. And then he had an idea. The mice were still arguing when Cam suddenly announced, Italy. The mice paused and turned to him, a little confused. What did you say? One of the mice asked. Cam smiled and replied confidently. I'm going to go to Italy first. The mice clapped their little hands with excitement and chatted in agreement. Italy sounded like a great idea. The only problem was who would take care of Cam's fromagerie while he was away. The mice promptly offered to help keep his fromagerie running whilst he was in Italy. 
They would serve the food and pour the coffee and try not to eat all of the cheese in the cabinet themselves. Cam thanked them for their offer. This was turning into a brilliant plan, and Cam couldn't wait to travel around the world on his grand cheese tour and bring it all back to his beloved fromagerie in France. The mice polished off their cheese board while Cam sat down in a spare chair and wondered what kind of cheese he would find in Italy. He was sure that whatever cheese they made in the land that created delicious food like pizza and pasta, it would be very, very good.